Hey guys and welcome back to Tech Genie. Now today what we're going to be doing is taking you guys through a tutorial on how to edit your photos or kind of color grade a little bit like Brandon Werfel. Now of course what you are going to have to do is make sure you've got a photo that's in a similar style so you'll notice he uses lots of bokeh and some teal kind of colors. If not bokeh then some reflections and the use of lots of lighting. So once you've got a kind of similar photo to one of these what we're going to do is we're going to head over into Lightroom and then we're going to do a little bit of editing in Photoshop just to make sure we can get something as similar or as close to his photos as we can. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. This is the photo that we've taken. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is fade out the blacks a little bit because he doesn't really crash them. There's a little bit of contrast, but not too much. And then we're going to try and get the kind of colors. We've got a little bit of teal here, the nice bright pinks. And then we're going to put these effects in in Photoshop a little bit later. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do, I think, is come down to the tone curve down here and we're going to bring up the shadows a little bit. So we're going to bring them up to a little bit about here just to kind of give us that little bit of a fade look and then we're going to bring up a little bit on the highlights up here just to kind of give us a little bit of brightness. So I think that should do. Now we're going to come up to the basic panel up here and we're going to do a little bit of correction. So at the moment the image is looking very orange so we're going to take that down a little bit probably down to about 3200 something like that and then I'm thinking just to kind of get a little bit rid of the greens and as we saw in this photo he's got lots of pinks especially in the face tones here and in the background so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the pinks up a little bit maybe up to 30 something so at the moment it's looking very vivid now what we're going to want to do is take down the contrast a little bit because as you can see here you've got lots of detail in the shadows and that and here we've kind of crushed that all out we can't really see what's going on in the background so we're going to bring the contrast down quite a bit. Let's bring it down to about minus 48, minus 46, something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the detail a little bit by bringing up the shadows. I'm going to whack that up to 100. So you can see in the hair we've got a lot more to work with. Now I am going to bring the whites up a little bit, maybe up to about plus 60, just to kind of brighten the image up a little bit. Um, and then again, bring the blacks up, just to kind of give us a little bit more to work with. You can see before and after, we press the backslash button, that's the before and that's the after. So you can see at the moment, we're definitely getting closer to what we're looking at in this photo here. Now, obviously at the moment in our image, we've got lots of purples and pinks and here, we've got a lot more teal kind of whites and obviously we've got a little bit of pinks in the back here. So we're gonna try and sort that out now by coming down to the hue saturation and the luminance section down here. So the first thing we're gonna focus on on this image is the hue panel. Okay, so I've taken the reds down a little bit. It hasn't made much difference, but let's just kind of bring it towards the pinks a little bit more. Now the orange, as you can see, if I drag that all the way up to the yellow section up here, it makes my hair up here quite greeny looking. So we're gonna to want to take that down a little bit towards the kind of reds. So if I take that down probably quite a way, I'm gonna try and take that down to about minus 40, I think. So let's leave it around there, I think that looks all right. Now the yellows, so we can leave those as they are. Now the greens, so we'll take those up, I think just to give us that little bit of a teal kind of look. Now aqua, usually we haven't got any aqua in the image yet, so aqua kind of stays at zero. Now the blues, if we bring it all the way down, you can see we can get the kind of nice teal look and up we can get that really bright pink so as you look to his images up here especially you've got the little teal kind of colors he doesn't really use these bright pinks so we're not going to do that we're going to bring that down a little bit bring it down to probably about minus 40 i'd say is a kind of a good good number okay so now we've brought the blues down towards the kind of teal color down to about minus 40 it's a little bit understated you can bring it down a little bit more if you want to but i think i'm going to leave it as it is at minus 40. now the purples I'm going to bring this down towards the kind of teal section a little bit, just to kind of give us that little look up here. Okay, so coming down to the saturation, we're not really going to change anything down here. Maybe the blues, they're a little bit too bright, so if we bring them down, soften them up a little bit, if we bring them down to about minus 25, that looks about right. Okay, so luminance is going to be determining the brightness of the certain colours. So for example, if I bring the reds up, the front of my face here is going to be really quite bright. So what we are going to do is bring the reds up a little bit, but not that much, probably up to about 30 I reckon, that's probably about right. Oranges as well, this is going to be my face as well, so we're going to bring this up probably around 50 I reckon, probably, yeah that'll do. Now blues, we're going to brighten these up a little bit just to kind of give us make it pop a little bit more. So we can leave that probably about 53. So you can see the difference that makes, just kind of making the blues up here just pop out a little bit. Now the next bit of editing we're gonna do is down here in the camera calibration. We're gonna be going for a little bit more on the teal side. So we're gonna bring this down a little bit to probably about minus 38, minus 40 I'm thinking. Yeah, so a little bit down there. So as you can see, if I put that back to where it was, 
we bring the teal down a little bit. I'm gonna bring the reds up a little bit more just to make them a bit more kind of orangey pinky kind of color. So if I bring them up now, just to do a little bit before and after at the moment, that was what we had before and now what we've got at the moment. So you can see we've got a lot more detail coming up down here in the shadows and we've got rid of that kind of orange glow because originally I think the lighting in the shop was orange and we're kind of making it a little bit more kind of neon kind of color. Okay, so that's almost us done in terms of the Lightroom editing here. Obviously in a lot of his photos, you can see he uses a lot of bokeh. Now we do have a little bit in our photo, we've got a little bit up here. Now I am gonna show you tips and tricks to add a little bit more in if you want. Okay, so here is the photo that we've edited on Lightroom. Now this document size is 1080 across by 1350 tall. Now that's because that's the portrait size you can get in Instagram. Okay, so now what I'm gonna try and do is try and get a little bit of these. I don't know if I'll be able to get this exact kind of look here. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone onto Google Images and I've just typed in Prism Bokeh up here and I've scrolled down and I found these ones here. Now I quite like this one and this one, mainly because we've got the whites and the pinks as we've got in our photo on Photoshop over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this, I'm just gonna drag it across and drop it into Photoshop, come back, grab the second one and drop that into Photoshop as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place this, I think probably in this top corner here. Okay, so then we're gonna come over to our drop down panel here and we're gonna come and we're gonna click screen. That's gonna remove all the blacks, so we should get this. Now I'm gonna get the eraser tool just by pressing E. Make sure your hardness is on zero and you've got quite a large brush, just to kind of soften out those sharp edges there so it's not really noticeable. Okay, so now what I've done is I've rotated it a little bit and kind of rubbed out those sharp lines a little bit and I'm placing it probably above my head about here I think just so we can get a little bit more of interest in this top corner. Now I am going to take the opacity down a little bit because it is quite overbearing. Okay so the second image that we've chosen is this one here. Now we're going to do a similar thing but we are going to ro rotate this one as well and just kind of drag this one probably almost across the whole image. Put it into screen as well like we did on the last one and you can see we've got some cool effects going on. Now at the moment as it is, we've basically hidden the whole image with these light effects. So what we are gonna do now is again comes the eraser and we're going to take the size down a little bit and just kind of rub out whatever's on my face a little bit because my face is kind of the main focus of the image. So if we're covering that, it's gonna look a little bit confusing. Again, take a little bit down here. I quite like these two ones here, so I'm gonna leave those as they are and I don't know whether we need this one up here. It might be a little bit too much, but you can see what I'm trying to do. Okay, so finally, this is a photo that Brandon's done, and as you can see, that's our photo that we've just been editing now, and it's looking pretty similar to what his is. Now, there's one thing that you might want to do now, is if you look up here, you see he's still got the pinks and the blues, which is very uniform, and now because we've put this one in, we've got some oranges and that, which doesn't really match what, we've been, what our color grade was on Lightroom. So I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna press Shift-Command-A, that brings us into the Photoshop kind of editing. And I'm gonna make these a little bit more pink and blue, just to kind of match what we have going on in our color grade. Now you can come over here, and we're gonna do the same here, bring these blues down towards the teals a little bit, and make these a little bit more pink. So when I click OK, that looks a little bit more accurate to what our color grade was. Now, one thing that you might want to do is if you look in her glasses down here, she's got lots of reflections going on, which we don't really have going on over here. So there's one more thing you can do, you can come onto Safari and you can just type in Bokeh. Okay, so you can see why I chose this one, it matches my color grade up here. I can change it if I wanted to, but it's just a little bit easier if I can already find one. Again, bring this down to screen, and you can see we've got lots of Bokeh coming on now. Do the same as I did earlier, bring up your brush, or your eraser, soften out the edges, kind of get rid of those sharp lines so you can't really notice them. I'm gonna position this, press Command T, and press shift while you bring the size down. I'm gonna zoom in over my glasses here, sort this out a little bit so it kind of matches the glasses a little bit better. There we go, so now we've got that on the glasses there. Now there is one more thing that I like to do. I like to come up and get the warp tool and kind of billow it out a little bit just so it kind of follows the bend of my sunglasses here. Okay, so there we go, that's the final image there. Now we can put these in a group so you can see the before and after. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the before and after. So that was the before photo that we took, and as you can see, very orange, not really looking very similar to what we wanted, which was this photo which we we're working off here. So that's the before, and then that's the after. Before, after. Okay guys, so that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the final edit showing you guys how you can edit your photos to make them look like Brandon Werfels. 
And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching guys. Live long and prosper.